and welcome back again for the next segment uh, with us. Kim Salmon is the Director of Community Relations at Fallon Health. Kim, uh, we're going to kind of change gears mm -hmm. a little bit to talk about uh, a pretty important initiative. When we talk about the central Massachusetts economy, the biggest employers are health care, uh, uh, higher ed, financial services, manufacturing, and then we've got a growing innovation, leisure hospitality uh, sector as well. And while it's an important employer, also for businesses, for uh, municipalities, for the state, it's also a pretty big part of the budget. And communities and individuals are trying to figure out how do we be more, how can we be more efficient? How do we spend dollars, you know, more wi wisely? But, but also, um, how do we get to some of the root causes or issues so that we can facilitate access? And um, so that, that, that's not easy stuff. No. Uh, and as they've been a pioneer in their 41 years, you know, Fallon Health uh, being the first HMO, um, you are pioneering in, in, by uh, working with the city of Worcester and then UMass, uh, another major health care provider, on, on a, a community health assessment process that's ongoing. Maybe you could just talk about what that is. Yeah. So um, between, uh, together, as a, a collaborative, UMass Memorial Healthcare, the Worcester Division of Public Health and the City of Worcester at Fallon Health uh, work together to really understand what are some of the barriers that affect the health of our community. We understand that, you know, I think that most people think that when you're addressing health outcomes that you should be looking at, you know, chronic disease, you should be looking at diabetes and heart disease. But what we've been charged with and have focused on is let's look deeper. Let's go to the root cause of what is what are some of the drivers of of health care, what are some of the things that are making costs so high and making it so difficult to stay ahead of it. So every three years together we work very closely with with the community at large. We work with community partners, with corporations, and um, with uh, the state and identify what are the barriers, mm -hmm. what are some of the what are some of the things that affect health outcomes and the things that are coming up and what, what we're continuing to learn is uh, that it is some social determinants, mm -hmm. which is a new phrase that's being right. said, but has really been ar around in the healthcare for years now, for 20, 30 years. And, and what would some examples of, a, of social determinants be? So some of the examples, things that affect positive health outcomes are things like education, access mm -hmm. to good education, being able to go to school and continue your education, being able to read by um, grade three, those things impact your health outcomes. Transportation, access to care, access to getting transportation to go to work or to get your children access into to daycare. Access to healthy foods, right. Exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, food insecurity comes up s across all areas, all throughout the cities and the communities that we're in is being able to have access to food. You know, many people who have uh, benefits like SNAP mm -hmm. are limited. They have a, a very small income. I think uh, Congressman McGovern and at the time John Polanowitz had taken the SNAP benefits and tried to live on right, them for right. a week and they saw how far they go. And in many cases you have to take all of these barriers and, and connect them together and see what those barriers look like. So you, you don't have transportation, you have small children, you need to get to the grocery store, right. you have your SNAP benefits, you end up going in there, you need transportation there, you get your mm -hmm. food, you need to get on a bus, you need to get your kids back to their home, sometime transfers, that it makes it all a huge barrier for them to have that, it read, what's readily available to others, you know, and, so. And, you know, I, if SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition yes. Assistance Program, yes. for s some viewers might remember it in, in the past as, as food stamps, food but stamps, that's a program correct. that uh, many working families uh, take advantage of uh, uh, seniors, others, mm -hmm. uh, to help kind of literally put food on the table. But if you've got your SNAP benefits and the, the corner store has a very limited selection and a lot of it being, you know, kind of soda unhealthy, and, and, right, and right, healthy right, foods right. and you don't have access to vegetables or, you know, healthy, you know, foods, that's going to impact obesity, other issues, which then trigger heart disease yes. and, and diabetes and mm -hmm. other things. So mm -hmm. uh, this is a way to try to... Uh, understand some of those things yes but this is really uh, but the the process is also kind of a conversation right yes. there's, there's questionnaires mm -hmm. surveys mm -hmm. 
and, and a community hearing. Right. So we do we do key informant interviews. So we reach out to the community at large, meet with uh, uh, the lead employers, with city officials, with um, people who run some of our uh, nonprofit organizations. Right. We reach out to them and get the feedback from them. We do surveys. We do focus groups with uh, groups like seniors. We mm -hmm. do focus groups with uh, people of color, with the Hispanic community, with the Southeast Asian community. Right. We really try to get direct feedback from the community to understand what their barriers are. What is it that affects their health? We also do community community forums. So we did one in Grafton, in Shrewsbury. We did one here in Worcester, and we have another one coming up in Worcester on July 12th. And that's going to be where? That's going to be at the Worcester Public Library in the Sachs Room. It's just an incredible opportunity for the community to come together and to be able to understand what we're, the findings are and to help us prioritize. What, what should we as a community, as a city, focus our efforts on? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we were talking in the first segment about a kind of a fun, um, fun sponsorship that uh, Fallon's, you know, helping make the Independence Day fireworks mm -hmm. and concert ha happen. But but this is kind of the brass tacks, if you will, of healthy communities cannot be successful communities, vibrant communities, economically, socially. Uh, and this is a big process of that. So to have uh, uh, Fallon Health with the city and, and UMass uh, doing going through that process, because we all might have our opinions, but you've got to engage, and that's what's happening. You really do. You have to get at the community level to understand what the barriers are, and you have to hear directly from the people who live and work here. Yeah.